Hello Texans, I'm Texas Secretary of State John Scott. Welcome to the second installment of SOS 101. Today you'll be learning about voting systems in Texas, including why we use them, how they are certified, and how laws and regulations in the state of Texas help ensure that your vote is secure. Let's start with a short history lesson. In 2002, the U.S. Congress passed the Help America Vote Act, known as HAVA, which was a major overhaul in the way our country ran elections for over two centuries. Among other reforms, HAVA created the U.S. Election Assistance Commission, or the EAC. It oversees the certification of voting systems at the federal level. HAVA also provided funding and processes for state and local governments to purchase electronic voting systems, which help improve efficiency and accuracy in elections and allow people with disability to privately and independently cast a ballot. Each voting system has to undergo rigorous testing, certification, and recertification by the EAC in order to be legally used in a U.S. election. In Texas, we have even higher standards for our voting systems, which must be certified by our office in conjunction with computer science experts and legal experts at the Texas Attorney General's office. All voting systems in Texas have to be certified by our agency in order for your county election office to purchase them and use them in any election. Currently, there are only two voting machine manufacturers that are certified to have their systems used in Texas elections. Hart InterCivic, based in Austin, Texas, and Election Systems and Software, based in Omaha, Nebraska. So if you're voting in Texas, you're voting on a system made by one of these two manufacturers. For a full list of all different types of voting systems that Texas counties may use, visit votetexas.gov. Click on Voting in Person, then select Voting Systems, and you can scroll down to click on the name of each system, learn more about how it works. Here are a couple of key facts that you as a Texas voter should know when it comes to the security of our voting system. First, voting machines in Texas are never connected to the internet. In fact, in order to be certified in Texas elections, they cannot even have the capability of connecting to the internet. This means that no one can simply turn on a Wi-Fi access on a voting machine. It's just not possible. Now, poll books to check voters in are connected to the internet to make sure that eligible voters only vote once. But remember, they are never connected to any device that you vote on or that tabulates the actual election results. Secondly, only the software that our office certifies can be loaded on voting equipment. As an additional security measure, Texas law requires that the software go through a hash validation process, which ensures that the source code of the software was not altered in any way. Third, all voting machines in Texas are tested three times, twice before the machines are used in the election and once immediately after the election. The great thing about this process is that, as a member of the public, you can attend the logic and accuracy test that your county election office is required to conduct before each election. Now, let's visit with one of the 254 county election offices so they can show us how it's done. I'm here with Jennifer Doinoff, the election administrator in Hayes County. Jennifer, what's going on here today? Well, today we're here doing our public logic and accuracy testing. We're required to do this by law before every election where we test the ballots and the tabulators to make sure that the outcome is, is accurate. So Jennifer, walk us through, if you don't mind, what are those steps in the process? So the first thing that we do is we create a test deck of ballots and then we go through and we mark those ballots, keeping in mind the ballot styles, the combination of races and propositions on the ballot. We make sure each entity candidate has at least one vote. We do provisionals, overvotes, undervotes. And then we tally those, we hand tally those so that we know what the expected outcome will be. And then we have a testing board come in and vote those ballots. And once those are voted, they scan those in and then we compare the two with our automatic numbers and our hand tally to make sure that they match. So how do we know that nothing changes on the machines between today and the election day? 
So this is just the first part of the testing. It's the public portion of the testing. We will do this again before we tally votes on election night and then again after we tabulate the votes uh, right afterwards on election night. So we'll make sure that the system hasn't changed and that everything is still working and functioning as it should. So Jennifer, after this, when are the machines actually deployed to the sites where voters vote on the machines? After we are able to look at the results from the hand counted votes and then the votes from the testing board, once those are exactly match and they're, they ascertain that the votes are correct, then that's when we deploy the equipment out. Once early voting begins in Texas, there are strict requirements and chain of custody protocols that poll workers must follow continuously with each voting machine. Election workers must confirm that there are zero votes cast on each machine before the polls open. Once all the votes are tabulated on election night, each county must complete and post an unofficial reconciliation form that shows the number of ballots cast, how many voters checked in, and how many outstanding ballots could be included in the final count. Within 72 hours of election night, each election office must also conduct a partial manual count to ensure that the votes were tabulated accurately. This is essentially a mini audit of the election where election officials publicly hand count a small sample of the ballots, typically about 1%, to ensure the hand count matches the machine count. Then, once all the outstanding ballots are counted, the election results undergo the Canvas process, which is a certification of the official election results. After the Canvas, counties must complete and post another reconciliation form that shows how many voters were checked in how many mail ballots were received, how many mail ballots were accepted and rejected, and the discrepancies between those numbers. This ensures that there is full transparency about any votes that were added to the final results after the polls close on election night. I hope you've learned a lot about the election system today and understand all the hard work that goes into keeping your vote secure. Tune in for the next episode of SOS 101.